Welcome guys. Today's video finds us over here in the Doucet area of Bangkok. We're right on the Chao Phraya River and we're going to take a look at a really, really interesting temple. We're in for a real treat. We're going to take a look at what Raja Wiwaswirihan or something like that. I'm sorry about my pronunciation. Anyway, I'll put the name in the video. And we're going to take a look at it. It has some frescoes that were painted by an Italian artist. And uh, unfortunately, the, the roof was leaking, so they have some scaffolding up around the main ubisote or the main uh, ordination hall. But you can see behind me, the, the Chetty is here, and there's a, a teak wood building we're going to take a look at, and we'll see some stuff. Anyway, let's take a look around here. This temple was originally constructed in 1277. It was a forest monastery here, and then they, uh, re, they, they tore it down, or it was abandoned, and then uh, the brother of King Rama I came in and uh, restored this in 1767. So anyway, it's got quite a bit of stuff, and uh, let's see what we see. So this is the Chetty, and it is fantastic. I really, really, really like the styling of this. And then there's a little shrine right next to it, but it's locked up. We won't be able to see inside of there. And then there is a museum, and the museum is open on Tuesdays and Sundays. And I think it's open from like 9 until 4 o'clock. And uh, Tuesday and Saturday, it's closed every other day. So it was built like 16 years ago is when they finished it, and that museum is back over here. Yeah, here is the museum, and it's closed up today. So it may be another day whenever I get a chance. I'll come over here just to look around inside the museum. There's supposed to be some pretty cool artifacts in there. So what's interesting about the, the four Buddha images around the top is those are the Indonesian style. You can see the lions around the base of this chetty. Yeah, this is fantastic. So right over here, this is the, the main hall. And you can see the scaffolding. They've uh, had some leakage of the roof and they're supposed to have the scaffolding down maybe around the end of the month, but the hall is open. And right next to it is like a little bell. Now this is an obisote, but I don't see the ordination stones, which is a little different styling. All right, let's go inside here. Yeah, it's a shame with that scaffolding because there's a Buddha image right there. I don't know if you can see it through that netting. It's got a golden Buddha image that's standing right there. Now this hall was completely rebuilt by King Rama V 114 years ago. He started and finished it two years later in the Buddhist year 20, what was it, 2454 is when it was finished and it's 2566 now. Okay, so we take off our shoes and come in here. Now this is an interesting styling to this building. It has three rooms. The first room is when you first come in. This is a room for resting and it's just kind of a plain hall. You can see the window shutters still have the ornate designs. And then they have a few little relics and stuff like that. But in here, this is the real treat. And I was talking to this monk here. He gave me a pretty good history of this temple. So this is the whole highlight of this hall. This is absolutely beautiful. So an Italian artist painted these frescoes. And the frescoes, they, uh, they come in on the wet plaster and then they paint these. So it has the 13 scenes of the Buddha, or the, how do they say it, the Jataka. And you can see, it's supposed to be kind of a Khmer style of artwork. That's what I read somewhere. I'm not sure what makes it the Khmer. But check out those elephants and the people. The detail is just, just brilliant. And then you can see the ceiling and stuff like that. Now right here, this is the main Buddha. And this is a, a replica. They had another one in here that, that the king loved to pray to. And they moved it. Rama IV moved it to Wat Prakau. So this is another one that was installed by Rama V. And then right above where the Buddha goes, you see the top one, that's the arrow one. That's the seal of Rama I. To the left of it is Rama II. To the right of it is Rama III. And then down on the left, that's Rama IV. 
and then right there on the right, that's the seals of Rama 5. So it has five seals of the Thai kings. And you can see the paintings over here. Oh, it's just, the paintings are absolutely beautiful. So you can see just the detail here. It's, uh, the Italian artist, his name was Riccoli, I think is what his name was. And they were designed by one of the princes, Prince Narasarai Nuvadawada Tongs or something. So you can see it's kind of a different looking pedestal for the Buddha. And then you can see here, this was the one that Rama V liked to pray to. And you can see the frescoes right behind the, that also. Okay, so this is the main hall. So this building is broke down into three rooms. You can see the window shutters here. Yeah, I can't get over how beautiful these paintings are. Okay, then the third room is right back over here. There's a bust of uh, King Rama IV, I believe. And the grandfather clock's going off. And so here is the third hall. So these Buddha images here are early Ayutthaya styling. And this is a plain hall, but it has the, the main Buddha. You can see there's no paintings on the walls, but it still has the same styling in the roof. And then they have these little cabinets that will have the Buddha preaching. They'll put those uh, little leaves in there. And then they have some bells and stuff like that. But yeah, this is really nice. I like the, the middle hall the best, but this is still a nice image. Okay, let's go over and we'll look at another little shrine that they have. It's right over by where the, the shrine is where we're going. This building right here, this was the residence when King Rama V stayed at this temple. He stayed in this building, which that makes it important to the Thais. And then they have this building here, which is really, really cool looking also. You can see kind of the European styling in it. And then they have some stuff over here. They do like uh, some schools and everything. They do some uh, teaching of the Buddhist monks. They have that over here. And at one time this was a forest temple. So you see kind of some interesting things. You see like the, has like a little mock-up of a mountain and it has a tree growing on it. But check this out right here in this. This is really cool looking. So they have a place where the monk stays, I guess. And then they have some ashes in these little urns. And then they have that tree growing right there. And then they have another little one. And you can see here is the, the Buddha image where he's fasting. It was before he decided upon the middle path. And then right in this building, this is the shrine. And this has some interesting stories to these Buddha images. All right, so inside of this little shrine is kind of a really cool little uh, three Buddha image shrine. So what these are is these are Lopburi era Buddhas. So these are quite old. And there's three of them. There's the two standing and then the seated. And I can't remember what the posture is of that one. But anyway, the story goes is this old monk here was doing a pilgrimage where he was walking for 30 days and he wasn't staying indoors. And he was walking from Ayutthaya and he went through Lotbury and he found these three Buddha images in a field. And they were just sitting out in the field and he sat there and he waited for the owner of the field to come. You can look around here. And whenever the owner of the field came, he asked him if they could keep these, if he could take them. So the, f the farmer happily agreed and they transported those from Lotbury to here. So that's the uh, story of those. And I can't remember the name of the monk, but uh, anyway, this is in this little shrine. You can see the rest of it here with the picture, like King Chulalong Korn, Rama V, and some other stuff. And another little shrine here with an Emerald Buddha and some others where the Thais can come and pray. And some lottery salesmen, of course. Yeah, the Thais will burn the joe sticks and light the candles here. Okay, let's go look at this teak wood building now. Okay, so this is the teak wood meeting hall. Now the temple says this is the most beautiful teak wood building in all of Southeast Asia. It's quite nice, but it's not, in my mind, as nice as the teak wood building that I saw in 
Mingoon in Mandalay, or not Mingoon, just in uh, Mandalay. That was the building moved out of the Burmese Royal Palace. This is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but that one is a little nicer in my mind. But I do like the gold styling up here on the top. Yeah, this is really nice. It's locked up now. This is just a meeting hall and they'll have uh, ceremonies in here and they'll like for uh, funerals, stuff like that. And that's right here next to the rest of this temple. And the last little building we'll look at here is this building over here. This is where the royals stay. And I think this was uh, where Rama IV's queen stayed in here also, but it's locked up and they just have it places for the monks to go in. You can see they had to have a shrine up there and then they have some urns and everything of some of the other minor royals that have died and been cremated and they're back in here. And I almost missed this. Tucked away in the back over here by the museum is this little belfry. And it was built in two, four, six, five, I think. Anyway, it's out of uh, all these stones. Yeah, it's kind of a cool looking little building. And then it has a kind of a small little shrine inside of it. And then if you come over here, there's some more of the, the temple buildings. You can see here this, it has the colonial appearance to this over here and then some more stuff. And then this right here, but this might be the, uh, the residence of Rama IV when he stayed here. It's right next to it. Yeah, you can see how that's built. That's really quite cool. Yeah, you can see the styling of this little building with the stones. Yeah, this doesn't fit into Thailand at all. It just feels so much different. And you can see the date written up there in Thai. You can see there they have the prayer wheel and then the drum up in the top. Kind of a cool little building also. And we got a little baby monitor lizard here. He jumped in the canal. And when you come to the temple, the Thais will buy these fish and then they'll go and release them into the river. And this is right here on the Chow Praia River. So that's the, uh, what is that one? The Krung Tep Bridge over there. And then they have their pier. And then the Rama 8 Bridge is over there. And then this is what you'd see if you take the boat to the temple. It's just right here. All right, guys, that's going to finish our uh, look around here at this temple. It's uh, definitely not a disappointment. Even though they have the scaffolding up around the main hall, it's still inside is the real treat with those uh, frescoes that they have on the inside of it. They are fantastic. That's, that in itself is worth coming here to take a look at. The museum, unfortunately, I'm on a day when it's not open, so I'll have to come back over here another day and take a look around it and see what, uh, what all's inside of it. But from what I read, it's supposed to be pretty nice. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This is a second class royal temple. I've been doing all the uh, first classes and this is a step down below. If it's a royal temple, that means it has special monies that are allocated from the royal family. So it has a little higher level of upkeep and it also generally has more significance to the, the Buddhist faith. I like seeing the uh, styling and I really like seeing those uh, mural paintings and all of that. So hopefully you guys did. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash like. If you've been here, let me know in a comment down below. If you know a little bit more about this that I forgot to say, let me know in a comment and uh, tell me about it. I'm always happy to, to read about something I, uh, I don't know. And maybe sometimes I forget to say stuff that I do know and I forget to say it in the video. So uh, definitely uh, leave me a comment. Subscribe if you're new here. I show you things that uh, you normally don't get to see in most uh, YouTube videos here. This is not something that tourists tourists near, nearly uh, or usually come over and see, which is a shame. It's uh, really nice, but it's just another one of the many temples here in Bangkok. And most people have limited time and they go to Wat Po and Wat Arun and Wat Prakau, stuff like that. But if you get a chance, come over and see something like this, you won't be disappointed. And from over here in the Dusit area of Bangkok, remember guys, life is a journey. Until next time, enjoy. Yeah.